All right, guys, thanks for coming in today. Appreciate uh, your time. We have a good crew here live. We also have four or five market centers from around Pennsylvania checking in on Zoom. So if you guys have questions while we're going through the next 50 minutes, um, you can raise your hand in this room. And then John's going to monitor the chat for those of you who, who are online. Welcome. Put your questions in the chat and then I can hit anything at the end of, uh, of this session. So my name is Dave Hook. For those of you who don't know me, we have um, I'm affiliated with this market center, also the market center in Harrisburg East. And then I have some other uh, real estate companies in the real estate space. So we have our real estate team, the Dave Hook team, run by amazing people. Many of you don't know, but I haven't actually met with a client as a realtor in six years. So if people ask me to show a home, I don't know how to show a home. I don't actually have the app, um, if a true statement. Um, but we're also in the acquisition space and we have a lending business and, um, and a real estate portfolio. So I love real estate. I love the entrepreneurial side of real estate and all that it offers you guys to get into. I loved when Gary changed the mission that where entrepreneurs thrive, just because I think real estate offers us the ability to go like a hundred different directions. And um, the reason that I'm passionate about the topic today, we're going to talk for like 45 minutes on the database. And the reason I'm so passionate about that is because when people ask me, how, do you, how did you sort of evolve in real estate from you know, not having a listing when you were 22 years old, uh, 20 years ago, to having some real estate businesses that are doing well run by other people? And the answer that I give that was the first domino in all of the other things is the database. It was that important. It was sort of the thing that changed the momentum that is now at the core of everything else that I do. And so I've been teaching this session that you're gonna hear for about 50 minutes, probably eight or 10 times in the last six months from groups anywhere as small as three people to up to 170 people at a location. I, I uh, was invited to have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with Gary Keller two weeks ago and taught him the database, uh, just me and him, and which is very odd. And, uh, <laughs> And and like typical Gary fashion, he's peppering me with questions as I'm talking to him and, and, and talking about this. And at the end, he holds up his notes and he had three full pages of notes. And I'm like, that guy is just forever a student, you know, and he's just asking questions and studying and he had all these notes. So you might hear more about this at Mega Camp. You might get a little bit of a preview of Mega Camp. But I want to um, give you just the tactical, nuanced, live, very personalized training um, that I gave Gary and have been given to other groups for the last eight months. So I'm excited about that. Um, so the agenda, oh, can I, I could use this clicker. See if it works. Nope. Nope. Where's Nate? <laughs> Hey, Nate, can you make this clicker work? <laughs> Nate is magic with things like that. Um, so the agenda, what we're going to get into is um, two, there's essentially two sections that I would love for you guys to focus on. So thanks. Just left and right. Yep. Yeah, cool. So, okay. Perfect. So um, we're going to talk about my business journey. We're going to spend a good bit of time unpacking why the database matters for a real estate business. We're going to talk about like tactically, if you're going to take any screenshots, it would be the third section. So how to run a database touch program in your real estate business. And then I'm going to give you guys a handbook that is yours. Um, compliments of me. I wrote it four years ago and we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to close. And if you guys have any questions, I can, I can feel those. There's two things I want to slow down on real quick before we get into it. What I'm going to talk about when I talk about how to build a database touch program is I'm going to give you what I actually run on our real estate team that's evolved over the last 10 years. Now, some of you, when I do this training are gonna say, well, I don't have a budget to run, you know, a touch program like this on 3000 people. Totally understand. So some of you already have a database touch program and you're gonna glean a few <clears throat> things from what we do on our team. That's yours to keep, glean whatever you can, take it and make it your own. Some of you are gonna say, but how do I start? Like, that's great that you're doing it at that level. How do I start? So when we get to the handbook, that's a 22 page document that I'm gonna give all of you. That is the exact handbook that I used when I built my database touch program as a new agent that evolved into what I have now. And that's a zero budget touch program. It doesn't cost you anything to run. And it has action items that will take you three or four months if you're following it to actually go from zero to a, a fully, equipped touch program with your database. Does that sound good? So 
First part's about my journey, how, why database, and then what we do on our team. Take what you get from that. Second part is a handbook that's a budget-free touch program that's yours, yours to keep. So two, two separate concepts that we'll talk about. All right, how many, raise your hand if you have, if you've heard of a database, you know what a database is, raise your hand. Okay, good. All right, raise your hand if you have a database of names and contacts that you've met and maybe know, like, and trust to some extent. Okay, pretty good. Raise your hand if you actually keep in touch with that database and has consistently done so multiple times a month for the last year or two. Okay. I'm, I'm getting some tentative, like half raising. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate the honesty. Appreciate that. Um, all right. Awesome. It helps me to understand where you guys are at as a room. So for those of you who have uh, a database touch program and you're touching in with them consistently, hopefully you can get some ideas from what I present today and add to yours. For those of you who don't, you may get as much value from the second part of the session when I give you that handbook as you do ideas for, for the first part. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's get into a little bit about my, my story. So there I am uh, in my 20s, uh, probably, gosh, I don't know, 20, 25, 26 years old. And um, I weighed about 140 pounds. I worked soaking wet. I worked too much. And many of you know this story when I first got started in real estate. Um, how, how many of you know the rollerblade story? Okay, like half, like three quarters of the room. All right, there's a couple of you who don't, so we'll tell it just briefly. So I first got started in real estate it was a few years before this. I uh, didn't know how to make the phone ring. And I was in a one room historic apartment in Carlisle. And uh, I came in that summer every day and looked at the, look, we actually had a desk phone uh, back then. And I looked at the phone and I, day after day, didn't understand why it wouldn't ring. Like I thought when you start a real estate company, the phone rings, you're in business, you're good to go. And it was a rude awakening every day. I went in there, it was the oddest thing. And like, we were in the phone book, like the, the real phone book, like there was yellow pages, we were in there and we were registered with the corporation bureau. We had a sign on the building, okay? All that was there and the phone wouldn't ring. And week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, the phone wasn't ringing. And I'm starting to sweat a little bit. Like <laughs> I have a degree in economics, and I started this thing and six weeks in, phone's not ringing. I don't have any business. I don't know how to get business. There's nobody there to train me to get business. And um, I, 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 so I quit. So I quit real estate seven times in my first eight weeks. Okay, my, my dad, he's, he, he, he's passed away, but he was in real estate and he would always talk me into, you know, son, you, you're going to be okay. <laughs> get back out there. And I'm like, get back out there and do what? And he's like, well, you got to talk to people and get your name out there. And I have, I have this shirt on, it says real estate's a contact sport, okay? And that was my first lesson in real estate. He, he made, he made uh, dad always had a way of simplifying things. He, he was like, he didn't have a lot of, of, of formal real estate training, but he said, Dave, the more people you talk to about real estate, the more the phone's gonna ring. And I'm like, well, that's probably true. If I don't talk to anybody about real estate, the phone's probably not gonna ring. So, um, so then the next question was, dad, well, how do you talk to people about real estate? Well, he's like, well, you can either call them or you can meet with them in person. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty good. That's really the only two things I can do. It's true, dad. Uh, and so I started, I read a book about how to listen, sell real estate written by Danielle Kennedy. It was published in the eighties. Okay. And I read it cover to cover and uh, it had some suggestions in there about how to talk to people about real estate. And one of the suggestions is to go door to door in a few neighborhoods. And so I printed out the tax record and I had, how many of you guys remember like the trapper keepers in high school? You got three ring trapper keeper. So I had a trapper keeper and uh, I had the tax records of all the people in the neighborhoods. And I had their name, you know, Katie Madden, Maggie Landis, Tracy Georgia. And I'm going door to door. And as soon as they would open the door, I would say, you know, hey, uh, Maggie. And hopefully they'd be like, yep, that's me. <laughs> And uh, if not, I was I was stuck. But if it went well, then I would immediately say, because they were thinking, they wanted to say, what are you trying to sell me? And I would immediately say, Maggie, they say, yep. And I would say, I'm not going to sell you anything. And they would like, stop. And I would say, I'm just a young realtor just getting started. And I'm ambitious. I have big goals. And I'm trying to make a name for myself in real estate. I don't want to ever convince you to try and buy and sell a house. All I want to do is help you for free with your home ownership experience in Chapel Hill. So if you have 
a house that goes up for sale down the road and you need to know the price or you need to know what something sold for, what your house is worth or a good landscaper in the community. I just, I just want to be a free resource to you. Is that okay? And they would generally say, sure, to get the door closed and so I can go on. And, um, and so I did that to, to people, with people, for people for two years. I went door to door in three neighborhoods, same three neighborhoods. Uh, each neighborhood contained about 180 doors. And so do the math, so it was roughly three neighborhoods, Nottingham, Meeting House Heights, and Chapel Hill. And the first time I did it, I got a lot of doors closed. The second time I did it, I usually got the like side look like, you're, you're like coming back for more. <laughs> and the third time and fourth time and fifth time, I started to get like the sort of like, ah, you know, you're still at it and you haven't sold me anything and you actually seem like a nice guy. So I got a little bit of respect. After two years, I realized that on average, if I engaged with somebody from the time that, you know, I, I first <clears throat> met with them through doing what I said I was going to do to asking them about their family. And I always wrote notes about the conversation, follow up handwritten notes. Thank you. Um, great conversation the other day. Here's that landscape you asked about that after on average, about five hours per person, that's what it took to get them to know me, like me and trust me about five hours a person. What you'll learn later in this is that on average, when we work with a real estate client, some of them, it only takes two to three hours of interaction. Some of it takes 12 to 15, but on average, over the course of your career, you're going to find that it takes about five hours of interaction on average with every client, with every follow-up, every communication, doing what you're saying, going to show up at closing, giving them a hug, about five hours to get somebody, if you do a good job, to know you, like you, and trust you. Funny story that most of you have heard about that experience door to door. It is a true statement that I did learn that if I went door to door on my rollerblades, I could hit four times the amount of doors. So it is true if you've heard it that I was on my rollerblades, full suit, 23 years old for two years going door to door. And um, slowly the phone actually started to ring. And so I say all of that because not to down downplay, you know, or up play going door to door. It's just one pillar that I used to get the phone to ring after two years and develop a lot of relationships. The problem is, is that my answer to everything and doing more business was to work harder. So it was to go spend more time go going door to door and cold calling and building those relationships, spend more five hour increments, getting people to know, like, and trust me. And so I eventually burn out and that's when I stepped into and stumbled on the Red Book. Um, how many of you have have the, have a copy or have read the Red Book? About Adrian? Okay, I want to see your hand up. So most of you. Um, so I stumbled on the Red Book and I stumbled on the concept of the database. And Nate, clicker's not working. There it goes. All right, so that is a massive vein on the side of my head. Does everybody see the massive vein on the side of my head? Raise your hand if you see that. Good. It's a little, it's a little weird, right? So, so uh, what happened in 2012? I was 32 and I quit real estate again because I started to get these migraine headaches, which I still suffer from today, but I was getting them constantly. And I was doing about 60 transactions, and uh, I was also running a brokerage. I was also handling about 15 rental properties that I own, managing all of it. And I worked 60 hours in my sales business. Um, I probably worked a total of 80 or 90 hours a week. And one day I looked at my phone records and I 90 sent and received inbound calls in one day. And that's when I sort of broke. And I started, I went to a neurologist, this, like I had a weight on my chest. I had some health issues and it was coming out in, in the form of this migraine. And the business was really sucking my soul, right? I didn't have a compassion program that we do. We weren't giving anything. I was giving everything I had to the business. And that was the result of just more and more and more and more prospecting. Nothing wrong with prospecting. It started my business. It's just, if that was my plan for the next 30 years, that eventually led to a, sort of a crash and burn. And so as we forward on, the business today has changed from, from 60 transactions in that particular business to 350 transactions last year um, and 102 million in, in, in sales volume. And that business gave $90,000 to people in financial crisis last year, thanks to the board of directors and an amazing team that, that runs that business. And so I started by saying that I'm passionate about teaching the database because I said that it was the first domino that changed the nature of all of the businesses that I'm involved in. 
And it was the first domino that made such a big change because it went from a mental health and a health and you know headache crisis where I was quitting real estate to literally that domino fell. I mastered the database and then it allowed a number of other dominoes to fail, which gave me business freedom. And so that's why I'm so passionate about the database. So let's talk about given that story as sort of a background, just tactically, what did I learn about the database as I look at my business back then and I look at my business now, why did it have such a big impact and why can it have such a big impact for your business? So the first is, is that how many hours did I say it took me to get somebody to know, like, and trust me when I was going to door, door to door, Shannon? Five, that's right, five hours, I like it. Um, five hours. And so I spent two years, five hours a person building a database of people, these homeowners who laughed at me on my rollerblades after two years until they knew me, liked me and trusted me enough. And write this down. If you don't write anything else that when they had a life change, I was the first agent that they thought of. I spent five hours a person going door to door for two years so that when they had a life change, I was the first person that they thought of. Now, who has an iPhone or something with a calculator? Everybody raise your hand. All right, get out your calculators. Um, type in 250, 250. Kim's got it for me. Times five hours. Easy math. I didn't need a calculator. 1250. So that's 1,250 hours it took me to get 250 people to know, like, and trust me. You guys following that? 1,250 hours, right? Now, if you prospected for two hours a day, five days a week, what's that? 10 hours a week? All right, you did that for 50 weeks. What's that per year? Louder? 520 hours over the course of the year. So if we started tomorrow and prospected two hours a day, like I did, went door knocking two hours a day, every day would be 520 hours of prospecting. And what was the what was the number it took? 1,250. So it would take us two and a half years, two and a half years of prospecting two hours a day to get to 1,250 hours. Is that, you guys tracking with that? My aha after I quit real estate the second, the eighth time, okay, when I was 32 and had the big headache, my aha was, Dave, your plan was to spend five hours with new people, getting them to know, like, and trust you so that when they had a life change, they would think of you to buy and sell their home. My aha was that when I looked at my high school yearbook, after I read the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, and I thought about my database, I started to circle names of people who were already who were who were regionally around. And I realized I had already put five hours per person in all the conversations I had with them in high school. And they knew, liked, and trusted me. I'd already put it in. I already did what I said I was going to do. I already related to those people. When I asked my mom and dad about their workplaces and the people in their workplaces, I was able to come up with other people that I knew that knew, like, and trusted me because I already put the five hours in in my 20s. When I started to look at my church directory, I circled all the people that were friends and family, and I realized I'd put five hours with all of those people, and they already knew, liked, and trusted me. When I went to my mobile phone, I started to scroll down through my contacts and circle all of the people that I already put five hours in that already knew, liked, and trusted me. What I was doing for those two years is I was putting five hours in per person, day after day, for two years, cold prospecting to convince people to know, like, and trust me. And I was neglecting the five hours per person that I already had in my spirit of influence that for the last three decades, I had already put the work in to get them to know I can trust me. The reason the database is so much more powerful than any lead source, and you hear the MREA book preaching it uh, when, when they do research on return on investment and return on energy, when you hear them talk about command and your database and all this stuff, and it feels like it's shoved down your throat, is because... It is the highest return on investment and highest return on energy, not because there's anything special about it, but because we've already put the five hours per person in, in the conversations we've had with people over our life to get them to know, like, and trust us. The only thing we didn't do is continue to put our name, face, and brand in front of them monthly. So when they had a life change, we were the first agent that came to their mind. And so the reason the database is so powerful 
is because there's pre-built trust. We just need to capitalize on all that work we've already put in. So we don't have to go door knocking for two hours a day for two and a half years to get the same amount of no like and trustness from the same amount of people. Does that make sense? You guys track them with that? All right. Highest ROI and ROE. So database leads are pre-converted. And so it goes along with, if there's pre-built trust, they already know, like, and trust us. We put the five hours in. They obviously have the highest ROI and ROE. If I get a new Zillow lead or realtor.com lead or pay-per-click lead or go door to door, I am, I'm starting by handing money to somebody or my time to somebody. First of all, my time's worth something and my money's worth something. And, and then I have to do five hours of work to get to where I'd already be if I just got in front of my database, okay? So you can see why the other lead sources are so, so much of a lower return when compared to the database on both energy and monetary investment. Scalability, so the math works. So this is just data. You can read this in the MREA book, which has evolved a little bit over the last 20 years, or you can look at our team's tracking. One in 10 convert. So here's how it works. So um, does anybody know how many people are in the country with like 350 million or so? So about right. About 350 million people in the United States. Roughly this, a similar percentage of home sales occur every year. It's about 5 million per year. Two years ago, it was the highest it's ever been. It was 6.1. This year, it's about 4.3. But it vacillates up and down over that 5 million a year. So 5 million homes sold, that's 10 million transaction size, by the way, in the United States. Roughly the same amount of people transact, <clears throat> give or take, every single year in the United States. Got it? R roughly the same percentage of people transact as in the United States in our community in Cumberland County, right? And roughly the same percentage of people transact in your database of 250, 350, 500 people that know, like, can trust you. That's all, that's all, it's going to be the most predictable business you ever had is your database because the same percentage transacts as in the greater populations of people in our communities in the United States. That's not gonna change, it's a fixed number. It happens every year, it has since the dawn of time. So if the same number of people transact, it's the same percentage, what makes them transact? Has anybody ever like gone door to door and talked somebody into buying or selling a home? Julie, have you ever like convinced somebody? No. So what happens is, is they have life change, right? So people have a life change. They find out they're pregnant, they need an extra bedroom. They got a promotion, they need a bigger, they want a bigger house. Somebody passed away, it's an estate, they had marital problems, it's a divorce. Uh, empty nesters need to downsize. Um, all these reasons come into people's lives and they have life change. People run from pain towards pleasure. They run from pain towards pleasure. That's what changes their motivation. So when life change happens to the same percentage of people in the United States that happens in Cumberland County, that happens in your sphere every single year, the only thing you need to do is if you've already put the five hours in to get them to know they can trust you, now you just need to keep your brand face and name in front of them enough times per month that you're the first agent that comes to their mind when they have a life change. Same percentage is going to have a life change this year's last year, I promise you, never changes. So the question is, now that you know that you have this group of people that know, like, and trust you, you've put all the time in over the last 30 years, are we keeping our face, name, and brand in front of them enough times a month so when they have, not to convince them to do anything, but when the inevitable percentage of life change happens, that we've earned their mind share. Another fact in the MREA book, if you read it, pages 134 to 146, the lead gen model, you're going to find that 76% of people, when they have life change happen to them, use the first agent that comes to their mind. They don't even interview a second one. Only 24% of people interview a second one. So the whole job that we have now is build the database of all the people we've already put the time into, the 1,250 hours, and then keep our face in front of them so that when they have life change at the same rate they always do, we're the first agent that comes to their mind and 76% of the people will use us. That's the entire formula of a big real estate business. We get confused when we start throwing money at all of these lead sources and not capitalizing on what we already have and have built over our, our lifetimes. That makes sense? So the math is, is that roughly if you have 10 people in your database that have no like and trust you, they'll have life change at the same rate every year. And one in 10 of those will turn into a, a, a closing either by referral or that person will close with you. And so of 
you know, our sales team that I talked about earlier did about 350 transactions last year. About 175 of them were from our database. Um, so either our agents' databases or the team's database. When you combine them on the touch program, about half of those transactions came from uh, the 60 touch program. The other half were just sort of ancillary, uh, uh, which I'll, I'll talk about in a second, that are attached to that touch program. And so ROI amplifier is the fourth reason that database matters. And it's just that if you have a core database engine running and keeping in touch with your database five times a month, one in 10 of those will convert. Your ROI will be really high, return on investment. And then any other lead source you pop into your business around that core system, the conversion will be much more profitable. A lot of people get into cold lead sources without a database engine in the center of their business. And it's just the wrong order. They wonder why they're not returning at a, at a high level on social media, or they're not returning on a high level on mass media like radio. And it's just, they don't have a core engine running because that is gonna amplify all the other databases. Make sense? Okay, cool. All right, I, I can't, yep, thank you. All right, so this is just an example. We have 21 lead sources in our in our real estate business. It's just a few of them. There's nothing special about these. Um, honestly, I just asked uh, a, an administrative person for some lead sources from the last couple of years. So last couple of years, Op City uh, was a one-to-one -one return. So for every dollar we put into that lead source, we earned one. Zillow actually turned into a one-to-three. The year, a couple of years ago, it was only a two-to-one. Um, for every dollar we, we spent on expired and FISBO data, we earned 13. Um, and then you get to our touch program. So every dollar we spend on our database, we earn $31. So we look at the return on investment. Um, that's just data, right? And again, we I think I needed to explain the why do we keep saying the database is so much more important to focus on. It's because every other lead source on here we're spending money on them. And when they get to us, we're starting the five-hour journey to earn their trust. With the database, it's already there. We spent it over the last three decades. All we're doing is putting our, our name, face, and brain in front of them. And then, they're, and then they're calling us when they have a life change. So this is just, you know, this particular business that I'm talking about, our sales team. Um, you can see on the right, our agents, SOI, and our, and our team's database combined, they get our touches. And that represented about half of our business last year. Um, does anybody remember how many I said convert? One in 10. So in our 60 touch program, the people that got our 60 touches last year, we had 1,750 roughly on that touch program, 175 transactions attributed to that touch program. The other 170 of the 350 came from these other sources over here, some paid leads, website, Google, sign calls, miscellaneous. So when we talked about the database amplifying other lead sources, when we're on our business growth journey, we often attack these other lower converting return on investment lead sources first. And what we've learned is that when you have a 60 touch program running first and people that know, like, and trust you are seeing your name, face, and brand in their mailbox, in their email inbox, at client events, face-to-face, -face, they're getting your phone calls, inviting them to the client events, they're getting items of value from you. And then that's running. And then you put that content on your social media feed and you take your database and you become friends with them. The ROI on your social media work goes up. Whereas if I went to social media first and just randomly started making friends with people that I may or may not know, like, and trust me, uh, people on average are hit with 14,000 impressions per day. My conversion on social media is going to be very average. I may say, this isn't really working. I put a lot of attention. Do the database touch program first, get your content in all of these different media sources, and then we go into social media. Now conversion on social media is much higher than it was otherwise. Same with radio, same with billboards, same with any other type. Same as if I do a touch program to a community and they're seeing my name, face, and brand five times a month. And then I go on Zillow and I buy market share in that zip code. And those same people are seeing my name, face, and brand everywhere they look and then they go and they they start hunting from houses and they see me on there as well my zillow conversion goes up so when we struggle with other lead sources a lot of times it's we just don't have our hands around foundationally that core database touch program so that's the recap pre-built trust highest roi in the business scalability one in ten convert and then it amplifies the other lead sources you guys sold that database is a good direction to start our businesses okay good all right so how do you actually run a database uh, touch program? So 
here's where we're going to get into the tactical. If you want to take any screenshots of this stuff, you can. If you're in our brokerages, this stuff is all yours for free. So I'm an agent with you guys and KW is about collaboration. So, you know, just message me. This stuff is for you. Um, but I'll give you as much content as I can right now since we're all sitting here. So three steps to running a massive database touch program. Step one is you're going to build it. Step two, you're going to feed it and add to it. And step three, you're going to communicate to, to the database. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So step one, build it. All right. We need to have a come to Jesus meeting. Okay. So here's the thing. I've been doing this for a long time. And even when we are board agents on our team, and I know Brittany, Brittany has this conversation as well. She's raised her hand. So we struggle to slow down and do the monotonous drudgery of entering people's names, addresses, and phone numbers into a system. Like it's the most painful thing to do that. Does it feel productive? No. Is it making me money? No. It's like I'm sitting, everybody else is like slinging houses and they're doing amazing things on social media. And I'm like, you know, Tracy George off and I'm typing her address in there, right? Nobody wants to do that. But here's the thing. If you time block two to three hours next month, and I'm going to give you an exhibit to use. It's like an exercise that will force you to get 150 people in your database minimum. And you go through the exhibit I'm going to give you today. And everybody, can you just get out your, your phones? Just get out your phones real quick. Get them out. Go to your contacts. Go to your contacts. Okay. And go at the top. There's a little thing on the right. When you get to your contacts, it says lists. Can you do, can you hit lists? And when you hit lists, does anybody see a number? How many contacts are in there? 2065. 2065. 2065. Who else? 2885. What else? 1003. 781. 1,419. 1,879. Okay. I've heard anything from like 50 to over 5,000 people. So you're all, you're all right in there. All right. So on our mobile phone list, I promise you, if you entered their name in there, like there's a good chance you know who some of those people are. Maybe not all of them, but I promise you, you know some of those people in your mobile phone list. All right. There's at least 50, 100 people. If you have 2,000 people that you know, like, and trust. There's a decent chance when we do this exercise, you're not putting, you're not coming from contribution and giving them quality touches five times a month so that when they have a life change, you're the first agent that comes to their mind, you'll listen, sell their home, okay? There's a decent chance that instead of doing this monotonous exercise, we're doing what I did and we're going out for two hours every day and lead generating to put five hours in to earn people's trust. I'm here to tell you to save yourself five hours and just time block three hours and enter all those people into a worksheet. And if you do that with 250 people, in, let's say it takes you 10 hours to put 250 people in using these resources that I gave you right here. If you do that, Kim, do you remember how many hours it, it would take you? What was that? Well, a little louder. 1,250 hours. 1,000. 1,250 hours. Thank you. You just made it sound so much worse. I know. That was my goal. To, to spend five hours a person to get 250 people to know I like, can trust you. So just stop it. Like, don't do that anymore. Do this. It's monotonous. It might take you three hours, six hours, nine hours, 12 hours, but it's not going to take you 1,250 hours. Right, Adrian? It depends on, so I know what each appointment is uh, and which con how much it takes to get a contract and it depends on the lead source. So I have every lead. So a radio lead is $2,000, $2,100 just to get to their front door. A database lead is exponentially less expensive to get to their front door. But I was thinking the other way that they can plan for that. Okay, I don't, I'm losing money, but I don't see them go to jail. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, we can all do that calculation. I mean, if one in 10 convert and the average commission check is about $8,500 in our market, 
uh, you, you can do the math. Like you put 300 people in there, that's 30 closings at $8,500. What's, what's, I don't know. I, I, 200, a quarter million dollars for 12 hours. Right, right. It's, it's a pretty big return on investment. Yeah. Would totally make sense if people transact on average of seven times, uh, once every set, six or seven years. Yeah, yeah, yep. So we're going to go through and we're going to do that that monotonous nine hours of work, so we don't have to do twelve hundred and fifty hours of work. Everybody, everybody, good with that? Okay. So that's what that work is gaining you. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a time block once per month. Mine was on the last day of the month for sixty minutes. Put it in your calendar as a reoccurring appointment. Just call it contact management. It's an appointment with yourself, not with client. Contact management, I'm going to meet with myself. And then in the notes of that event, just write update all past clients to status close and tag them past clients. So when we're dealing with the CRM, we usually have tags. You could do this on an Excel spreadsheet if you want it. It doesn't matter. Command, you could do it. So you're just going to update any closings in your database you had to like, they, they were in there, now they're past clients and closed. Okay, that's all I want you to do. And then write in the notes, just write, add four new Mets. That's one a week in a month. Four, one person a week, I'm going to add. In the course of a year, I'm going to add everybody that I closed with. So if I do 10 transactions, I'm going to add 10 plus four a week. So I'm going to add however many that is, 50. Wow, that, that was, yeah, no, 50, no, one a week is... Four a week, one a week, one oh, a week. Oh, yep. So fifth, so so roughly fifty plus the ten. So I'm going to add sixty people to my database. If I'm selling fifty homes, it's going to be a lot more than I'm going to add. Okay. So that's how you feed it. You're just going to pick, and it could be four a week, right? If you do four a week, you're going to add a couple hundred to your database. And then the last thing you're going to do is communicate with it. And so this is what we do to communicate with our database. So we do twelve direct mail which you'll see in a second, postcards and newsletters, quarterly items of value. So these are your notepads, your calendars, something a little bulkier that they can, that will stick with them for a while. 36 emails, three emails a month. One is a listings email, one's an educational video, and one's an all text email about the market. Four client events, and then four database calls. And around the client events, we're going to do the four database calls and four event invitations, which gets us just over 60 touches when you add on the calls and the, and the event invites. And so this is just an example of our newsletters. So mine started out one page, and it's now migrated to six. I wouldn't overthink it. One page is fine to start out. And we usually start with just answering a question is how we write our pieces. So if you, a lot of people say, well, I don't know what to write. Well, if I ask you, all right, you guys have two minutes to write down every question you can think a consumer might ask you about real estate. How much commission do you charge? Uh, how many, what, what's going on in the real estate market today? What does buyer's agencies mean? Uh, what does a buyer agent actually do? How long does it take to buy or sell a home? What are the top five things I can do to my house to make it sell for more money? Consumers have all these questions. So write the questions down. And then if somebody asked you that, you'd probably answer them, right? You just, you wouldn't think, you wouldn't overthink, you would just answer them. That's all we're doing when we're writing content. We're asking questions, we're answering questions, and we're providing educational value to our database. Our postcards have a handwritten note on the back. And no, I don't write 3,000 handwritten notes. Um, we just write uh, one handwritten note, and then it's laser printed 3,000 times. Okay. And then our emails are uh hot listings emails video emails and then we do our all text email and then we do our promotional item of value we usually pull the slides from family reunion gary's slides about the market and we do a economic forecast we just just take exactly what kw provides and send that to our database we do a calendar we do a referral directory um, sometimes we do a notepad so a little something with a little more weight that goes out to our database quarterly. And then we do um, four client events. Sometimes they're giveaways uh, where we have people call into our company to win something. 
Um, talk to your lawyer about sweepstakes rules. So you can't ask for any consideration in Pennsylvania. It's just totally a giveaway. You can't expect anything in return. Um, we do the pumpkin pie roll giveaway. Um, and uh, the, the company does a fall blast or a client appreciation concert sometimes that we partner with. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip that slide and, and because I already hit it and just touch on this. So that, that's our, that's our team's touch 60 touches to our database of people that we know, like, and trust. Does, Razor, does anybody ever have a hesitancy with calling your database? Adrian? Yep. What's, the, what's the hesitancy? Like what's going through your head, Erica? Yeah. Yep. Totally. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I was going to say sometimes if it's been too long in between contacts, I'm not sure if they're going to. Yeah. You know, receive it. Receive it well. Yeah. Like I like I've dropped the ball. I haven't touched in with you for a long time, and it feels kind of awkward now. Yeah. Totally get it. So, um, is it okay if I just go through a couple dialogues that 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 I use? Yeah. My biggest issue is not being scripted enough. Yeah. Once I get on the phone. I lose everything that I want to say yeah. and I start fumbling and then I hang up and go, now I just look stupid. Yeah. I love that. I appreciate the honesty. So I don't know about you guys, but when I call my database, I always used to hesitate for the same reasons. I felt like a salesperson and like I was taking advantage of the relationship. And um, I started to get some training on this and I ended up falling in love with this process. So um couple things to, to what you just said. I am someone who appreciates a fundamental reason why I'm calling, but not attempting to be fully scripted in the whole conversation because the conversation can take a couple different turns. And so if I'm relying on a script, I'm going to sound scripted, but instead I rely on what I call dialogue. And, and then when I do it enough times, I usually have five or six scripts that come off that dialogue that just happen because they naturally happen. But the, having a fundamental reason or a principle as to why I'm calling is the most important thing for me. And the handbook that I'm going to give you has word for word each of these dialogues that I say to my database, okay, when I was actually the one calling them. And so you can use them and make them your own. The apology dialogue is my favorite for the one that we didn't call our database for a year or two, and it feels a little awkward. It goes, uh, it goes a little bit like this. So let's say... Uh, Hey, a Adrian. Thank you for that. <laughs> Sorry for those of you online. There's a man behind the screen that you can't see. So I say, hey, Adrian. It says, hey, Dave. Hey, I, hey, it's Dave Hook here over, over at the, the real estate team. Um, it's, it's been a long time. You have a second? Yeah, sure. Hey, I, I, I'm just reaching out to a number of the relationships that I, I value. And, you know, I value our relationship you know, I sold you that house on Elm Street like three years ago. And I've just been doing some real estate training and I realized I've completely dropped the ball and I just want to take ownership of it. I feel super bad about it. They usually say something like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, that's very strange to them. I'm like, yeah, I know. I've just learned from a mentor of mine that, you know, the way that he's practiced real estate is when he's doing transactions with people, he cares about them. Like I cared about you and he knows he's getting paid. But after the transaction, when he's not getting paid is actually the more important part of his representation than during the transaction. And I just feel like I took advantage of some people that I really appreciate. And you're one of them. I worked with you. I talked to you about home ownership while I was getting paid. And then I dropped the ball and I didn't keep in touch with you for the last two years. And what I learned from that mentor is if you care about the people, the clients that trusted you, you're going to check in with them and see if they need anything else that's home ownership related, whether you're getting paid or not. It's okay if I check in with you once a quarter or so, invite you to our client appreciation events, ask you if there's anything refinance stuff or insurance rate quotes or anything that I can refer you to for your home ownership experience if you're having any problems. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm just apologizing for not keeping in touch, letting them know I learned a lesson and prom asking their permission to opt in to me keeping in touch and sending them information in the future. So permission-based marketing is really important. If you haven't kept in touch with your database, start with an apology and ask for permission. And that conversation will likely keep you accountable to touch in with them later on because you've told them that you're going to. So then when we're talking to our database after that apology, we're going to use a couple other dialogues. So the one that I just mentioned is, hey, Adrian, it's been a couple months. I promised you when I apologized for dropping the ball, I'd check in. 
anything going on. I know it's the spring season. A lot of people are doing clean outs, you know, gutter clean outs, things like that. Lawn care. Anybody I can refer you to that you just need some help. Plumber, electrician, lawn care. Um, you know, rates just pop down a half a point. A lot of people are getting refinance quotes. Anything you need about your home ownership experience? No. Okay, no problem. Just checking in. I'll check it in another couple of months. So the home ownership experience dialogue. Okay. The next one is the items of value survey. If we're if we're doing client events and we're sending people stuff every month, uh, it's an easy ask to call Adrian back and just be like, "Hey, I haven't talked to you in a couple of months. I know you didn't need anything with your home ownership experience. I'm just doing a little poll. Like everybody says, ask your customers what they want. I appreciate you guys so much you and your family. Um, have you been getting our newsletters and our emails? Yeah, I think I see them. Is there, we're just running out of topics. Is there anything about real estate that you'd love, like a question that you think would be really good for me to answer in one of our videos or in one of our newsletters? I'm just taking a poll so I can get great content for the next year. What comes to mind? Okay, so I'm asking for their help. It's a real easy conversation. The client event, easiest one of all. If I'm doing a client event, give it away pumpkin pies. Hey, Adrian, did you get that RSVP we sent in the mail? Just want to see if we can mark you and your family down and pick up a pumpkin pie. Easy, easy reason to call. And then the ask for business. We always do jab, 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 right hook. I don't feel comfortable asking for business every time. But if I come from contribution, invite Adrian to my client events, ask about how I can help in his home ownership experience, three or four times in, I start, what I've noticed is they actually say to me, hey, I, I wish I had somebody I could refer you. I feel like you take such good care of us. So they're wanting to reciprocate. And so I might call and say something like this. Hey, Adrian, you know, how's the family? You know, do the lead in. And then, hey, the reason I'm calling this time is actually a business call. I'm in a bit of a bind. I say, well, what's going on? I'm going to say, well, I don't know if you've noticed, but the real estate market's in sort of a, a, a inventory crisis. A balanced market is 900 homes for sale in our county. Right now, there's about 340. And I remember when I helped you buy that home, you contracted me not just to wait for something to come on the market and then email it to you. You wanted me to network and you hired me as your agent to find you your dream home. And I'm not one to just sit by. I have five other buyer clients that have hired me to find them their dream home. And I feel like there's just nothing out there. Does anybody come to mind in your social circles or your workplace that has even thought about selling a home in the next 12 months that I might be able to give a free home value estimate to? Okay, so ask for business, right? But remember, I'm not just asking for business. I'm talking to them about how I can serve my clients better and how they can help my clients. So it's a much easier conversation than just, I want you to help me. I want you to help me help my clients. And then the nonprofit, if anybody in here has interest in a nonprofit, you don't have to have thousands of dollars to give away to help people in need. I started with $50 a month and we would give that to people in financial crisis. And we utilize our database to ask them who they knew who was suffering in their social circles or at their workplace. And that was one of our database calls. And then we would bless that person anonymously with $50. And that you know can have some momentum over time and turn into more and more and something bigger and bigger. Any questions about those dialogues? Is that helpful? Yeah, good. All right, so John, can you click on that, um, that link will come up? Yeah, perfect. Amazing. All right. So John's going to scroll to the first page and I'm just going to stop here. So I'll just, I'll just have you scroll through as I talk. So I'm going to give this, this to you guys. Um, we'll figure it out. We'll send it out or something, Brittany. Yep. From John. Perfect. We'll send this out to you guys. So I told you at the beginning, we're wrapping up now that what my team does has evolved out of a, a, a zero cost program to build my database in the beginning. This document is a step-by-step -step manual that you can use if you don't want to spend any money, okay? And all the dialogues are in there, all the touches, the items of value. So this just outlines everything I taught about today about developing know, like, and trust. If you go to the second page, this just talks about the three steps, build it, feed it, communicate with it. And then it goes into build it. And you'll see right here, it literally like use exhibit A, you know, doc, and it says time block 12 hours use exhibit A, highlight the names, put them into your CRM, submit this many people. So there's a little checklist for you guys. If you go to the next page, it talks about feeding it. And there's an action item about that time block at the end of the month. Go to the next page. It talks about communicating and starting with a 36 touch program that consists of social media posts, videos to your database, four phone calls a year, four pop buys and four handwritten notes. 
And then if you scroll down, it actually goes through exactly where to get the content of your social media posts, the content for your direct uh, video emails. If you go down, it'll show you how to um, time block your phone calls, what to do on your pop buys. If you're gonna pop by their house and give them an item of value, if you scroll down, it'll show you the examples of pop by ideas that I made for my database. Nobody on my team still believes me that I actually made the salsa myself and delivered it. They think that my wife did, but I still stand by that. If you go down, um, then, then handwritten notes, and then it, it, it gives you the action items, exactly the time blocks to put in your calendar to communicate with your database. And you, you can use it as a checklist. If you go down, it goes in and it tells you the exact apology dialogue that we talked about here. If you go down, it talks word for word, all of these home ownership dialogues, the nonprofit dialogues, and then if you ask for business dialogue, so all of those call dialogues. And this is how we, um, this is just an example. It's just it's something I didn't touch on today about how I segment databases. And we, if you want, you can have one whole database or you can segment it into an A plus that's like highly likely to refer you. You're gonna spend more time and energy on them. And then an inner circle, you're gonna, you're gonna deploy mail and, and scale touches, media touches to them. And then the outer circle, they might get my emails, but I'm not going to spend any money on them. So if you want to segment your database, that's our guide to that. Seeing uh, Jason shake his head, you're familiar with that probably through Buffini. Yep. yep. Um, so this just talks about the segments, outer touch, inner circle, outer circle. And then this is the exhibit that you can use to start building your database just by answering questions. Who does your landscaping? Who does, you know, who, who would you call to, as a plumber, electrician, mechanic, it, you know, all this stuff. These are people who you likely already know, like, and trust or know, like, and trust you in the community. So it'll just prompts you to remember who they are, and then you can log them. So uh, next is, if you go back, uh, I think one down once. Oh, that's me, isn't it, John? Yep. All right. So that is essentially everything. Um, just as a side note, you know, that's my story, why the database matters, you know, pre-built trust. It, it scales, it amplifies everything else, and then how to do the database. If you have a budget, you can do it like my team. If you don't, you can follow that manual. As a separate aside, people often come to me and say, I do want to have a budget, but I don't have any money. And so we have something called the Brand Ambassador Program, which is an add-on. You're welcome to private message me about that. I'll give you a copy of it. It's a menu so that you can go to, to business sponsors, we stay away from RESPA. So anybody involved in real estate industry, we don't ask to sponsor. That's a no-no. You can talk to a lawyer about that. It's my disclaimer. But we have contractors, financial advisors, dentists that want their logo on our emails to our database. And they give us a monthly stipend and we priced it out. And that helps zero cost what we do. So you're welcome to that. And then if anybody wants any more information on our nonprofit, we have a seven-step video on how to build that. That integrates very well with the database touch program. And then John, um, our amazing administrator over here, every time we teach, you know, there's a few people who can take and just take some insight from what we taught today. There's a few other people that will take the 22 page document and they'll make it their own and they'll build a, a touch program. And I would encourage you guys to do that. Every once in a while, there's one or two people. And I think he's a little full right now, um, but, Every month he can onboard a couple people and he has a done for you project. Um, it's at rootedbc.com. This is John's baby. I think he services one, a couple agents at this market center. Maybe um, Mike Braddock is involved with it. Um, a lot of the agents are outside of this market that he services, but he does, he runs a 60 touch program for agents and teams. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, just go to rootedbc.com and John can talk to you about the done for you. Is there anything else, anything I missed? All right. Was that helpful? Very, yeah. very. Good, good. I appreciate you guys. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, any questions that cover everything? Brittany is going to send you. A, yes, me? Nate? <laughs> Brittany is going to ask Nate to ask John to send you guys a link. <laughs>